All right, so this is a brief overview of our virtual experiments for heat of combustion. So this is in relation with stoichiometry and we give courtesy for Pearson. So Pearson, thank you for providing us this virtual link for this experiment. So this is accessible for everyone. Now let's proceed with the most demonstration for the first step. So we're going to choose the following two gases to react from the gases selection drop-down menu. So this is our selection drop-down menu. So we're going to follow the instruction, methane and oxygen. All right. So let's check if this is balanced for this simulation. Okay, so carbon, carbon, one mole, and one mole off, or four moles of hydrogen here, two times two, four moles. So the whole equation is already balanced. So next, now we're going to add one mole here for methane and two moles for oxygen gas. Now let's click enter. The simulation proceeds. Okay. So the initial figure here, these two molecules here is represented as two moles of oxygen gas and this one as methane CH4. Now let's press next. Now we need to react. Let's wait for this simulation to occur. Now from this initial, once we already reacted both, okay, or once we combusted CH4 with oxygen gas inside the bomb calorimeter, it forms the following products as two moles of water. So this one and this one are molecule rep representation of water and this is the representation of carbon dioxide. Now let's press or click next. So the final values. Note how the moles in the reaction chamber change and the final values were added to the ICF table. Now for the change, okay, so since this is complete combustion, we're going to put negative one and negative two for methane and oxygen respectively. Why is it so? Since, since this is complete combustion, all the reactants will be converted to carbon dioxide and water. So as our final answer for this ICF table initial change and final will give us zero for the reactants as zero moles for methane and zero moles for oxygen. Okay. Now, every time one molecule of methane reacts with two molecules of oxygen gas, one molecule of carbon dioxide and two molecules of water are produced. Okay. For one molecule of methane with two molecules of oxygen gas, one molecule of carbon dioxide and two molecules of water are produced. So we are talking about the balanced chemical re reaction or chemical equation. So this is true. Text for every time one mole of methane reacts with two moles of oxygen gas, one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of water are produced. So this is also true. The change amounts are dependent on the coefficients in the balanced equation. Yes, this is true. 
The final amounts are determined by adding change amounts to the initial amounts. So this statement is actually when we add initial and change, we get final. Okay. So let's check. One plus negative one. So this is zero for methane. Two plus negative two. This is also zero for oxygen gas. So zero plus one gives us one for the final moles of carbon dioxide. And zero plus two, this is actually two for the final moles of our water. So this is true. Okay. Now next. So this is the summary. The initial amounts are independent of the balanced chemical equation and are determined by the experimenter. The change amounts are determined by the chemical equation and must follow the same ratio as stated by the coefficients in the, in the balanced equation. Okay. So I repeat, the change amount, this one, must follow the same ratio as stated by the coefficients in the balanced equation. And lastly, the final amount is the sum of initial and change, okay? Initial plus change is final. Now if we're going to rerun our experiment, our virtual experiment, so we're going to use two here, two moles of methane and four moles of oxygen gas. Click enter. So the initial figure here is the representation of the molecules of methane and oxygen gas respect respectively since we add two moles of methane here. So the representation of neutral colors here, one and two, are two moles of methane. And since the red ones, okay, we have four molecules for the red ones. This represents four oxygen gas. Now let us click next. So let's predict the change, okay? Since this is complete combustion, okay? So all the reactants must be converted to products for our final amounts of moles, okay? So this brings up to zero. So if we have zero moles for methane as final moles and final moles for oxygen gas is zero, we're going to set the change for methane and oxygen gas as negative two and negative four respectively. So this is negative two and this is negative four. Since all of the following are converted to carbon dioxide and water, okay? So since two moles of CH4 all over one mole of CH4 multiplied with one mole of carbon dioxide. So this is two moles. And one mole of methane times two moles of water all over one mole of ethane. So two times two all over one, this is positive four. So let's check change. Okay. Now let us click next. For the final, we need to add both. Okay. So two plus negative two, so this is zero. And four plus negative four, this is also zero. And zero plus two to positive two, so zero plus four, this is four. Now let us click final again. So we got the right answer. Now next, click react. Okay, please wait until the particulate level view of the initial and final condition is produced before proceeding with the next step. 
So we already produced the molecular level or molecular illustration level of the products. So we have two moles of carbon dioxide and four moles of water here. Let us click next. This is the final particulate fume. Okay. Every time two mo molecules of methane react with four molecules of oxygen gas, two molecules of carbon dioxide and four molecules of water are produced. So this is actually true. A okay, stoichiometry. Every time two moles of methane reacts with four moles of oxygen gas, two moles of carbon dioxide and four moles of water are produced. So this is actually true as well. The amounts in change rho are dependent on the coefficient in the balanced equation. So this is actually true as well. Okay. This is dependent on the ratio or stoichiometry of the reactants and the products. Okay. So since this is complete combustion, all the reactants will be combusted into carbon dioxide and water. The final amounts are determined by adding. So to determine the final amounts here, we're just going to add respectively for each species. So this is true. Next. Okay. So we are going to rerun the experiment. We're going to use one mole of CH4 and three moles of oxygen gas. Now let's proceed. Click enter. Now let's wait for the simulation to proceed. Okay. As you can see here, the initial microscopic view or atomic view of our species here, we have one mole for methane and three moles of oxygen gas. Now let's click next. According to the balance equation, how many moles of oxygen O2 are required to react with one mole of methane CH4 provided? According to the balance equation, how many moles of oxygen O2 are required to react with one mole of methane? Okay, so one mole of methane times one mole or two moles of oxygen gas all over one mole of. So this is twice. Okay, next. So how many moles of oxygen O2 are available? So we're going to determine now which among the following are the limiting reactant and excess reactant. Well, obviously here on the question itself, we are going to determine the number of moles for oxygen gas, okay? The availability of number of moles of oxygen gas. So this is already in excess, okay? But since we are given with the following moles for methane, okay? To determine the, uh, what do you call this? The limiting reactants, okay? Which limits the production of the products, okay? The limiting reactant now here will be calculated as the given moles all over the number of moles in the balanced coefficient of chemical equation. Now, let's divide one mole for methane all over one mole for methane on this reaction. So that is still one for three moles of oxygen gas all over two moles of oxygen gas. So this is already 1.5, okay? And converting it to methane, so it is still 1.5, so we're going to answer it as 1.5, three all over two, Okay, three moles of O2 all over two moles of O2 from the balance equation. I hope this is right. So this is three, okay? Three moles of 
oxygen gas which are available. Okay? So this is actually the given. Okay? The question states that there are three moles of O2 in the container initially. Okay, so the analysis is how many moles of oxygen O2 are available. So if we're going to answer this one, okay, we don't need to overanalyze it. So this is just a question on how many moles initially for the oxygen. So this is three, okay? Sorry for overanalyzing it. So let's click next. According to the balance equation, how many moles of methane are required to react with three moles of oxygen provided? So still one, okay? Oh, it's 1.5. Okay, how did we get 1.5? So from 3 moles of O2, okay, times 1 mole of CH4 all over to cancel out the number of moles for O2, we need to divide it with the coefficient 2 or 2 moles of oxygen gas from the balanced equation. So 3 times 1 all over 2 gives us 1.5. The amount of methane that reacts must be the same ratio as the ratio of the coefficients in the balance equation. So it's 1.5. I repeat. So how did we get 1.5 here? Three moles of oxygen gas times one mole of methane from the balance or the coefficient of balance of chemical equation all over two moles okay, from here gives us 1.5 moles of methane. Next, how many moles of methane are available? So one mole. Now the ICF row predicts the amounts of each reactant and product based on the response to the previous question. Now, this is a little bit tricky, tricky because we need to determine which among the following reactants are the excess and limiting? Okay. For the limiting reactants, it is already obviously one mole of given methane all over the balance coefficient at one mole of methane. So that is still one. For the three moles of oxygen gas all over two moles of oxygen gas from the balance equation gives us 1.5. Now, how are we going to predict the change? Okay. So since this is still combustion, our formation of products will be depending on the limiting reactant, which is CH4. Okay. So one mole of CH4 reduces a product of positive one mole of carbon dioxide. How about the other one? Water. To calculate now the number of moles for water, so one mole of CH4 times two moles of CH4 all over one mole of CH4. So the mole of CH4 cancels out, gives us two moles of water to So since we have negative one here, and to predict now the amount of oxygen gas here, negative one mole of methane or one given mole of methane, multiply it with two moles of oxygen gas all over one mole of balanced coefficient of methane. So this is equal to negative two. Okay. Now let's predict the change. So we are correct. Okay. So next one is to predict the final. So one minus or one plus negative one, this is zero. Three plus negative two, this is one. Zero plus one, one. And zero plus two, two. Let's double check. Okay. All right. Now let's proceed. Now we need to react both. Okay. 
All right. As you can, as you can see here, the atomic scale of this virtual experiment from the initial, we have three moles of given oxygen tank. Okay. The concentration of the oxygen tank is three moles and the concentration of methane here is just one mole. Okay. After reacting both or combusting methane with three moles of oxygen forms a product of two moles of water and one mole of carbon dioxide. Okay. So this one, oxygen gas here is actually the excess or unconverted oxygen gas or O2. When we say excess here, So every time one molecule of CH4 is mixed with three molecules of O2 and the mixture is allowed to react, one molecule of CO2 and two molecules of H2O are produced. How is that so? So for every one molecule of CH4 reacts with oxygen gas here, okay, it produces the following reactions, okay? So one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of water. So the calculation for the final moles of the product came from delimiting reactant, which is CH4, okay? So this is true. One molecule of excess oxygen gas proceeds in the product side because this one mole of excess oxygen gas is unconverted. So submit. Next, the ratio, the ratio that methane and oxygen gas react and for the production of CO2 and H2O must be the same ratio of the coefficient for the reactants and products. This is true when there is an excess amount of one of the reactants initially. So this is true. Next, every time one mole of CH4 reacts with two moles of oxygen gas, one mole of CO2 and two moles of H2O are produced. So we have one mole here and two moles here. Okay, this is actually true. We're talking about the balance equation itself. And every time two molecules of methane reacts with four molecules of O2, two molecules of CO2 and four molecules of water are produced. Yes, of course, this is true as well. Now the change amounts are dependent on the coefficient in the balanced equation. Of course, true. The final amounts are determined by adding the change amounts to the initial amounts. So the final again, we're just going to add initial and change respectively with its species. So this is true. The initial amounts of the reactants are independent of coefficients in the balance equation. All right, this is true as well. The initial amounts are independent of the coefficients of the balance equation. So this is not affect the initial amounts are not affected with the coefficients of balanced equation. Next. Okay, let's define a reagent in excess, or this is excess reactant. Is a reactant that is not completely used up in a chemical reaction. So as you can see here on this example, this excess particle here is actually one mole of oxygen, which is unburnt. And we have a limiting reagent or limiting reactant is also used up in the reaction. It limits the amounts of product formed in a chemical reaction. So to calculate now the limiting reactant here, the given moles multiplied with or divide it with the coefficient of balanced equation. So say, for example, one mole of 
methane, CH4, all over the coefficient of balanced reaction here as one mole of CH4 gives us one. And for the oxygen here, three moles of O2 all over two moles of O2 from the balanced equation gives us 1.5. So 1.5 is greater than one. So CH4 limits the production of our product CO2 and H2O. In these experiments, which substance is the limiting reagent? As said earlier, one mole of CH4 all over the balance coefficient of one mole of CH4 here gives us one four CH4. And for the oxygen gas, three all over two is 1.5. So 1.5 is greater than one. 1.5 is the excess and one is the limiting reagent or limiting reactant, which is methane. So let's choose methane here. Submit. Next, in this experiment, which substance is the excess reagent? I said earlier, one for methane, 1.5 or three halves for oxygen gas. So we're going to use O2 here. So never ever choose the products because we're talking about the reactant side only. Okay. Because the reactant will affect the number of production or amounts of the product side. So CO2 and H2O are out of choice. Submit. Next. How are the initial amounts of reactants and products determined? The amounts are determined by the experimenter. No. This is defined by the unbalanced equation. No. This is defined by the balanced equation. Now, if we're going to give this question, how are the initial amounts of reactants and products determined? So this is defined by the balanced equation. Submit. Oh, this is determined by the experimenter. So how is this so? So this is determined by the experimenter because the amount of concentrations for CH4 and O2 is declared by the experimenter himself or herself. Okay. So next, how are the change amounts of reactants and products determine the amounts are? So we're going to involve balance equations here and the ratio coming from the limiting and excess reactant or perhaps limiting reactants itself. So we're going to choose the last one in the same ratio as the coefficients in the balance equation. Okay, next. How are the final amounts of the reactants and products determined? For this virtual experiment, we're just going to add initial and change. So the sum of initial and change amounts. But it is actually dependent on the, this one in the same ratio as the coefficient in the balance equation with respect to our limiting reactant. But the best answer for this one is letter E or choice number five. Submit. Next. Okay. So that concludes my brief discussion for heat of combustion and stoichiometry walkthrough.